Hello and welcome to the 1990 series. My name is Amanda O'Shea. I'm the Loving Life Coach from the Serendipity Experience. And I have with me today with great pleasure, Mr. Rudy Kennard, who is on the big island in Hawaii. How are you doing? Aloha. Aloha. Nice to see you. Thank you for inviting me. And I love your name. Uh, um, loving, the Loving Life Coach. What a beautiful, what a beautiful title. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's what, that's what popped up. <laughs> that, I, I love that. I love talking about people falling, you know, falling back in love with life, right? That's, that's, yeah. that, that's my thing. Rudy, it's, it's really nice to, um, to have you as part of the 1990. And I wanted to really give you thanks on air, if you like, to everything that you have done in the, sharing of this understanding it's been for me you were such a big figure back in the day when um in 2012 when i first got introduced to it when you had the it was then called the three principles movies website i listened to you a lot oh a lot. <laughs> and, and it was really i love listening to your voice um i i learned a lot of that the you know my introduction or my first exposure to the principles from watching the videos that you had created then and i know that it's i know that um that the three principles movies um doesn't that website isn't isn't um around anymore as such although it still is but it's now called innate evolution and is that right everything that was on the three principles movies website is now on the innate evolution videos Section. Yeah, um, due to various changes in European law, we, we um, had to change the three principles movies.com website. We restructured it and put it all onto innateevolution.com. So everything that was on three principles movies is now in the video section on innate evolution transformational stories, facilitator interviews, doc, short documentaries, all of it's there. <laughs> Amazing. And you know, it is true, that was like seven years ago, let's say, and it didn't seem then. I think I bought every book that was available then. There wasn't that many. Um, it seemed like that, that you, you know, your website at the time had the most, sort of most resources, the most videos. And it seemed like, I mean, you literally went around the world interviewing people. Yeah, well, at the time, because I first learned about this with Dr. Roger Mills and Sydney Banks about 18 years ago, and 18 years ago is so different from now. Um, there wasn't really anything. I mean, there was some personal websites, um, and there was a little bit of research out there, but there wasn't anything putting it all together and a basis where anybody anywhere in the world could actually listen to and watch facilitator interviews, see other people's transformational stories. And it originally came from a friend who said, well, if this stuff is so good, where's the proof? Where's the research? Where's the videos? So myself and my partner at the time, we both co-created the movie site together. I traveled all around the world. Or we traveled all around the world and prisons, schools, universities, communities. I found myself in the deep south in Mississippi. Then all of a sudden I was in like Nepal in India, you know, in Nepal and then in New Zealand and filming all these transformational stories. And the whole site was just really an offering to the world to show we're not broken apart from the thought that we are. Life doesn't work the way we think it works. And everyone is imbued with this incredible spiritual potential. And as that's uncovered, as it's realized, we have no idea how powerful we are. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it is, it is like, I, I always talk about having the biggest secret in the world of well-being. Or I, I talk about I've got the biggest secret in the world of recovery. And I really see that. And I see it as... I see it stronger today, uh, today than I did when I first got introduced to it, you know. And so that is such a generous, you know, it's so generous. I saw back then, or I see it now, what you guys did in the amount of time and, you know, you really were in service to, to us all. So thank you for everything you did back then. And look now what's happening. It's like, you know, this 1990 series, every, you know, you, you, you and Jules have got your Friday Night Live. You're doing very similar, really, isn't it? Things and 
there's numerous opportunities for people to hear this stuff and you've really seen that you've really seen that unfold right yeah well i think there's a missing link to the human experience and it is hidden in plain view it's so obvious it's completely inobvious and it's like a fish swimming around in water not knowing it's in water because it's so used to water the nature of the human experience our entire reality is constructed and created via thought or perception and this internal perception is the creator of experience not what's happening to us but anyway so one of the things that i did is i created very very short animations because you know we look at our own lives we haven't got a lot of time we're working we're bringing the kids up we're paying mortgages we don't have a lot of time so we created very short succinct animations you know two three minutes each going over points of this understanding for people to understand and that's been really popular so far yeah and it's and i, I, know I just shared with you that um I show those animations in the recovery center where I work and I show those, I share those animations with, with all of my clients. And it's, it's been incredible. There have been, you know, a number of people who have had their kind of like their light bulb. Mm -hmm. moment. And, that's, I and I know there's so much work goes into that, right? You know, so much work goes into just producing one of those. And I guess it just, it's something that's just naturally from you, you your creation is just in flow and being nudged and and you can't you know you can't stop it you wouldn't want to stop it really would you you know but it's uh well going back to your definition the living life coach like when there's uh allowing life to live you rather than you trying to live life when there's allowing life to live you it is the um, catalyst for creativity and inspiration and inspiration really means in spirit and so like the three years voluntary work i did and then like the animations they take about a week and a half full-time work to create each yes rudy canard as a personality was doing stuff but there was the this creative force moving me no, it's a difference between inspiration. Inspiration, you're moved like the wind blowing the sail of a ship and it's effortless. And motivation, you're having to like paddle. <laughs> and so there's these, um, two, um, there's these two flows in life. And I think when you're in the flow of being moved, um, goodness me, life gets fascinating. It, it becomes more and more magical and synchronicities and people you meet and things you ended up doing um it life's just majestic it really is if you allow it to be of course <laughs> otherwise that's, it can be the reverse <laughs> that's, that's the serendipity right that's what i call serendipity just yeah it just happens it just i know happens. It's, it's really it has been amazing so Rudy, you've ended up in Hawaii now, and I mean, you know, we can't we can't uh, plan this stuff, can we? This thing called life, hey? Eh? No, what? no, I, I, I'd met someone called Jules or Julianne um, in Hawaii. I went back to England, then I came back to Hawaii, and I mean, now it's a long story, but now we're married. And we're working together and her story um, is just beautiful it's it really shows that resilience isn't the personal resilience is a part of it's inbuilt in the nature of reality and we are humaning within this consciousness and resilience is built into that and so we're all resilient and Jules's story really shows that and so we've been learning from one another. And it's funny because she watched my animation too, one of my animations. I think it was the thought filter, which I think is a second one. And then she got a, such a deep insight into what she was already doing. It allowed her to give words to it. Wow. Yeah. So we're happy we're in Hawaii, um, processing a green card, life's unfolding. And yeah, we'll just see what happens next.
Oh, I love that. Happy in Hawaii. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. (laughs) That's that's just 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 great. And George is going to come on. Actually, George is one of the nineteen ninety. Yeah, and we'll we'll you know it'd be great actually if you can share her story maybe or because it is powerful, right? So it's very very powerful. So resilience you just mentioned there that is probably it's very buzzword isn't it at the moment you know everybody's talking about well-being and resilience and there's resilience trainings i'm just introducing the iheart into spain the um so that's all happening that happens here in january 2020 and it's that resilience it's it's promoting resilience it's a word that a lot of people um may have heard of but don't actually really understand what it what it means i don't know what how do you see what what, what does the word mean to you rudy how would you um how would you describe um, resilience well the i mean the definition of resilience is being able to bounce back from challenges or adversity i mean some colleagues have actually said define resilience as not being bound by the past or present circumstances. I see that resilience isn't personal to us, but it's an impersonal power that flows through all of us. So we all personally have it, kind of ironically. I'll give you an example. When they drop the bomb in Hiroshima, experts believe that it will be at least a century before nature would recover. Now, red carna flowers sprouted from the epicenter 10 days after the blast and flowering cherries blossomed the year after. And now it's like nothing happened. Again, when there's this enormous oil, um, oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, experts believe that it will completely ruin the ecosystem. <clears throat> but within a few short years, it's like nothing ever happened. Nature is resilient. And I think biggest, one of the biggest lies of humanity is believing that humans are separate from nature. Well, we're not. We're not, we're not part of nature. We are nature in human form, like a giraffe is nature in giraffe form and a tree is nature in tree form. We're, human, we're nature in human form. And that same power of resilience inherent in nature is running through us because we are nature humaning now as a species as we realize what we truly are that we are this we are consciousness with the power to think up that we're separate <laughs> We are resilient with the power to believe that we're not. It's all about belief. As we see belief as a thought creation, we don't have to change our beliefs, but we don't have to believe what we believe. (laughs) And we fall back into our innate resilience. And believe me, Amanda, I'm waffling a bit now, but I've been all over the world. I've interviewed school kids, um, prison inmates, um, people with psychological labels, labels, and there's not one person I've ever met who wasn't resilient. And I've seen people come back from the most adverse and challenging um, situations. How? Because if you believe that you are broken, if you believe that the, what happened to you in your past has happened, there's nothing you can do about it. You feel disempowered and that's completely innocent. But as you realize that that has happened and things have been as they are, but right now in this moment, the only way to ask us to experience what had happened to us is we have to have a perception, a memory, a thought of it. And from that, we can create a belief that we're broken, that we're never gonna be okay. And we live as if our belief is true. Belief means be alive. Our beliefs are so alive that it seems so true. But as you realize that a belief is created by a thought and thoughts can change and adapt, they're malleable. 
as people's beliefs that they're broken start dissolving, they return and I've seen it and I've interviewed it and I go to my site and watch it for yourself. As the belief is that I'm not broken, I just thought I was. As that gets embodied, um, people will turn back to what they truly are again, which is pure consciousness that can't be broken. And resilience is a natural implication of seeing what we are and not who we're not. So lovely. Thank you, Rudy. That was a lovely little, little ramble. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do, do you know what I saw the other day that I'd never seen before? The word lie is in belief. Yeah, wow, beautiful. And I've never seen that. And I wrote, I wrote it on the board, and then it was like B-E-L-I-E, -E, and I was like, oh, never see, I've never wow. seen that. Never seen yeah. that. So my belief systems can change. Like, you know, I, I believe something, then I hear something else, it's like, oh, actually, that makes sense. And then, you know, their belief systems aren't permanent, are they? They're not constant, they're, they're, they're they're variables. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about, what we talk about are the, the constants behind the human experience. Yeah. Behind the human experience. For me, it explained everything. I, it, it, this was the, I still now today will never forget that, oh my God, that I had. This explains all human behavior. No. That's worth traveling around the world for, right? That's worth sharing the message. <laughs> I know. I remember filming in a prison, uh, jail actually. It's a female jail. And the, all the, the, the female inmates came in and they had like their, you know, their stripy overalls in, on and they, they were kind of talking to the three principles facilitator. And it's beautiful because it's like watching, I don't know if you've seen like the David Attenborough BBC documentaries where they've got flowers and they're kind of like, it's a time lapse and they open really quickly. I saw these hearts like starting unfurling within the hour. It's just an hour that they were in there. And <clears throat> one lady just said, My jail for all of my life has been my thinking, my beliefs. My beliefs has kept me locked up all of my life. It stopped me enjoying my life. It stopped me, the fear had stopped me living. And now I'm in here and I'm physically locked up. But the bars of this prison aren't the prison. It's been my thoughts the whole time. And now I'm in here and I've learned this. I felt the most free I've ever felt in my life. It's ironic. I'm in here, but I'm the most free I've ever been. And I remember, sorry, getting emotionally thinking about it. I, I remember like a tear coming down my face as I was filming because I was so touched. And like another woman was saying, you know, I, I, had, I had a past and you could tell by her face, it wasn't a very pleasant past. And I've been blaming that my whole life. And it's all thought now. I'm not going to say just thought because it sounds so meaning, but now in this moment, what is it? It's a memory. That's the only way we get to experience the past. We have to have a memory and we feel the memory in this moment that we're, that we're having the memory. And she realized that you can't drive looking in the rear view mirror as a metaphor. And so she became future focused and she said that, the reason I'm in prison wasn't my past. The reason I was in prison is because I was believing my thinking and acting out of it, and I don't need to do that anymore. So I've been so touched traveling around the world, earthquake survivors in Nepal, um, university students in Seattle, prison inmates in California, and the story is always the same. As we wake up from a completely innocent myth, of how experience is created, we fall back into what we are and how we work and we work better. And 
life's still going to happen. We're still going to have our ups and downs. I'm not talking about happiness here, although that's part of it. I'm talking about a deeper order of potential to the human experience. And that potential is a spiritual potential. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it is like, must be for you that, that, you know, you've seen, you've been around this so much longer and you've seen so many people, but it doesn't stop, does it? One person seeing this, one person's life, um, like, you know, waking up to this, that, that the, the positive kind of effects that that has, not just on that person, but the whole family or that whole business. It's just, it's profound. It's, 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 it's super cool. I know it is. It really is. Wow. And thank I'm, you for the beautiful work that you're doing, Amanda, in, in the recovery centre. I mean, I'm, I would like to interview you <laughs> and get you in, in replace of me and, and ask you about what you've seen it must be really profound so yeah just wanted to expect my uh, gratitude to you for the work that you do thank you lovely well it's just it's all back at you know like we're just in it we're part of this it's wonderful to be a part of this community um i want to thank you again Rudy, for for my early days i was very lucky to have had people like you that had had sort of been on the path before me and and been able to, to let, you know, sow seeds, sow seeds and, and, and bring it alive. And especially in the animations, I just, I love that. So, aloha, happy <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, uh, I hope one day I'll be able to, yeah, come there soon and visit you all. And see mm, you. We love that. I love Hawaii, love it. When I used to work on the cruise ships, we did Hawaii cruising and been there before. It's such a, uh, they're just all of it, all the islands, so special. So you deserve all the happiness and, mm. uh, and yeah, carry on, carry on cartooning, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll put another order in. <laughs> Lots of love to you. Love to George, love to everybody. And we'll see you soon. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, lovely. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> Thank you to everybody. Thank you for watching. See you soon. <laughs>